So how do you learn the grid? That's a question I got a lot. And I also get a question for grid course and the course of how to make music or produce music. And I think a lot of people have the imagination of you start at the beginning of a course and then at of the end of the course you are pretty much a professional and you know how to do music. Uh, but that's not how it works. A course can only give you maybe the rough basics of how things work. But again, also the basics you can learn easily on the internet, watching some videos, maybe reading a book on uh, signal processing, or it's, let's go here to the, uh, the Bitwig channel itself. They have nice playlists here. Let's build uh, is a nice playlist. Also the grid is a nice playlist. Uh, modular concepts here. Um, so there are a lot of videos already on the official Bitwig channel you can watch to learn the basics of how the grid works and how s basic signal processing works. I also made here some kind of playlist for the Bitwig grid crash course. It's some videos it's at the moment hidden. There are some videos coming soon for that. But at the moment it's just at four videos giving you the basics. Um, but in my opinion, it's pretty hard to make a grid course because you can't teach everything that's out there. It's not, imp it's not possible. And it's also more important to overcome problems for yourself in the future because you get always to the same point where you get stuck. You're always stuck uh, every time to, till infinity. It's making music, making modular um, patches, is basically problem solving 101. So you need to learn how to solve problems, how to overcome problems for your for yourself in your own way. Uh, it's not like there's always someone explaining to you what to do in a certain moment, right? That's that's not how it works. And it's also, I think, a problem with um, modern day school. Uh, they teach you stuff, but they don't teach you how to overcome problems when there's no one there telling you what to do. So here, uh, someone on Reddit wrote, I've watched Polarity put together his amazing instruments and generative sounds, but how do you get to the point of learning all the individual modules? Just a matter of read the fucking manual, trial and error. My issue is when I am creating an instrument or effect, I realize I can't overcome a problem because I don't know all the modules and what they do or when a given context calls for one module over another. And basically what here, what here is described is basically how you learn. I start always with try and error. I have a rough concept in mind when I build something. I have a rough idea how stuff works. So I try some stuff, right? A trial and error. And then maybe I fail. I get to a point where I get stuck. Then I go to the manual and read. Maybe there's a, ma a module for that, for that problem I currently have. Oh, there is a module. Let's try and use this module. Does it work? No, it's missing this and that value I can, I have to adapt, right? So how do I overcome this in a certain different way? Oh, there are two other modules I can use. So I can change this here and I can change that there and combined it works like the other module I use. So I use these modules instead. <clears throat> so I read the manual for that, right? I go in there and look if there is something. And um, learning all the individual modules is in my opinion, it's not the way of doing it. You learn along the way when you solve problems, you learn along the way by sol solving problems what these modules do and how you can use them and also how you can misuse them in certain contexts to give you what you want. And uh, learning the modules on its own, I think it doesn't give you anything. I mean, you can do it and you have then a bit of knowledge about the modules, but how do you use them? How do you combine them and, and why? And what kind of modulation is in between and what parameters to choose and why? And so there's a lot of knowledge missing. So learning individual modules doesn't give you anything. It's something you learn along the way. <clears throat> the manual is pretty interesting to find information on what kind of modules are there and what they do and what they use as input and output and so on and what you can modify so it's interesting but also when you go to the grid itself right you can click any module here and you can click help and then you see 
a short description, you can see the input and the output. So it's pretty nice actually for that. Um, so it's also the manual in my opinion. So it's yeah, going to the manual and look what's what's in there and use it. And um, then also what's missing in here is that you not only go to the manual, you also go to research papers on the net. You go to different tutorials, you go to uh, description of devices or hardware implementations of certain things, right? So for example, I try to um, recreate the 808 drum set in the grid without using samples, of course. So I was going to the net, internet, researching for 808, how was the 808 built, right? And someone here made a video about it. Someone made a patch in pure data, so I have the schematics of this. Then I have here the original board of the 808, so they use here uh, six oscillators, square oscillators. So for some reason there was some kind of uh, element they could use on the chip, on the platin, um, to create six different oscillators, uh, pulse oscillators to switch. So uh, pulse oscillators pretty simple, it's just switching on or off right all the time. So they came up with that. And it produced some kind of very inharmonic sound, but they could use this for um, for the simples, and it's also used here for the open hat and the closed hat. So it's pretty interesting actually to research this. Then there's your tutorial from Sound on Sound. I found this on the net. Um, they have a lot of articles on tutorials from back of 2001 online, still online. So someone synthesizing basically 808 inside of the Nord modular which is also interesting to read. So you research all that stuff, write it down. I'm writing down here in Obsidian, take some notes, right? Um, then I have here something I found on the Cherry Audio uh, website. They created some kind of plugin for the 808 symbol, right? And they write some information down here. Um, let me see. Um, the above description above is simplified a bit. An actual TR-808 then splits the simple oscillator hash in order to replicate the higher pitched initial segment of the sound and the lower pitched body of the sound. These use separate amplitude envelopes and are filtered a little differently then mixed together. Okay, so they give some hints to the patch, how the patch could be implemented. So then I made some own tests, some experiments, right, in the grid. It looks like this here. I made some screenshots how I did it in the grid. These are simples. This is here the I-808 hi-hats. Um, you have a one, two, three, four, five uh, square wave oscillators combined together with two filters, right? And then you get some, some kind of sound out. Does it sound the same? Yes, it does. Great. Can I simplify it? And so on. So this is, these are my, st my thoughts. And I document everything here so I can make a video maybe about it or maybe I can record it when someone asks me about it or I want to implement it myself in maybe three years and I have no idea how I did it back then. So I have something documented. And I also sometimes watch my own videos, to be honest. Um, I watch my own videos when I need to create something and I did it, I um, recall it maybe three years ago and then to have something you know noted or something documented about this. So it's, it's how I work. It's basically like a scientist. So you research, you try and error, you make experiments, you compare the results. Does it work? Can I simplify stuff? Can I misuse something? Can I recombine it? And then you make a lot of patches and then you stick with something that works great for you and then you make a video about it. So this is how it works for me. So it's always like this, you never, it's never ending. You're always in this kind of loop um, that you try and error, you research, you make notes, you make experiments, you fail, and then you build up experience over time. This is how it works. And this is how it works with everything in life, in my opinion. Um, you can only learn the basics most of the times. So it's also with driver license when you, be in driver school right you learn how to drive a car but you never learn how it's how it is to be in a real accident when you hit someone with a bicycle when some animal runs in front of your car what how do you react with your body um i had this experience multiple times with my car because i'm a bit older i think um 
and I know how it feels and how I reacted back then and how I would react now. So it's always like this, in my opinion, with all stuff in life. It's not like you can take a course and then you know everything. It's not possible. It's always failing, succeeding, learning, building up experience, trial and error um, <clears throat> and stuff like this. So this is how it works. Um, yeah, I want to show you actually here the 808 sound, how it sounds. So this is here a Markov chain. Um, Markov chain melody generator. So it's you choosing the next melody note based on the last melody note, right? It's also based around um, probabilities. And this is here a patch. I didn't came out of nothing. I built maybe 10 patches like this before that patch. But all of the other patches had some shortcomings. Maybe it was too complex. It took too much CPU power or it was too complicated patch too many modules and stuff like this but this was basically my last patch here and this was the thing that made it into the video um, so when you see the video most of the times I did this multiple times beforehand in different iterations and different um, bad uh, bad versions <laughs> okay so this is the Markov chain um, let me open up here the 808 thing. Uh, 808 simple. This is basically uh, the patch I showed you in the Obsidian notes. But here yeah, I'm using two pools um, oscillators. One is face modulating here, the other one. But I'm using here the Hertz 2442 Hertz as a base signal, it never changes. And this one has 1K, uh, one, one kilohertz here, uh, pitch and then modulating, phase modulating the other one. So you get this very inharmonic sound. Also I feel the 808 snare. And here I'm doing something I would never do actually, but I learned this while I'm building this patch. Um, here I'm using the gate input, Get actually disable this here. And you can see we get here a gate uh, positive value of one from zero to one. And I'm using the gate length, which shortens, which shortens here this burst to one millisecond, even shorter, the 0 0.2 milliseconds. And I'm using this as exciting signal for a self-resonating bandpass filter. So I don't trigger anything, it's just, you know, this sound, this click sound going into the filter here, and then because the resonance is pretty high with the bandpass, I create a sine wave at 244 hertz. Then I mix in here a bit of noise, and then it sounds like the, the 808 snare. And you can shape the snare while by, uh, by uh, shaping here the signal. So it gets more body if you make the gate length a bit longer. And because I did this, I can remember this now and can reuse it in different contexts and different patches I create in the future, right? So it's pretty interesting actually get with the gate into the filter here and create a snare sound from this. I would never do this on my own and you can't learn this in a, in a course because why should you learn this? There are so many drum machines out there and every drum machine uh, did it basically a bit differently and they did it back then because it was cheap to do on the on the chip, right? Um, what else? Hats, symbols, oh yeah, the hats. The hats are basically here, the five square waves. Sounds like an 808. Kind of, maybe it's not exactly the same because you don't have the same modules like they did have on the chip back then, but it gets in the same direction, right? So this is how you learn basically the grid in my opinion. It's a lot of trial and error, read the manual, watch some videos, combine stuff, have a lot of fun by experimenting um, with things, and then you do this till the end of time.
until infinity because that's the fun that's the fun part you're never done learning things in life um, so yeah I want to make put this video out for some people or maybe for the future when people ask me that stuff I can point to this video I can <clears throat> explain all this in a in a kind of um, understandable way okay thanks for watching leave a like if you like the video and see you on the next one bye